I think, I don't think I do a good enough job of, of advocating for mean to bees, at least at my school or to my friends. Sometimes like, I should be talking about this more. I, how much should I be talking about this? Like how much is it where it's like just saying what's update, like updates for the company versus what's bragging and just, I guess, talking about the company too much. So uh, you are coming up on your 16th birthday, which means that you are learning to drive, I presume. Um, does that also mean that there is a car purchase in your future? Um, no. <laughs> There is? Oh, well, let's be really like, maybe. Uh, yes. I don't, I guess. There's there's no particular car. There's no car in particular, but you threw me off with that question. I, I don't know. Um, I'm learning to drive. I'm waiting to uh, get my permit approved. And as for specific six, 16th birthday plans, um, Mm -hmm. A social distance, I don't know, I think a social distancing picnic would be fun with all, with all my friends. Is it a, I, I know this is such a, a crazy time for everybody, is it, is it kind of a bummer that you have a milestone birthday and then yet we're kind of all on restriction right now? Like how are you handling the, maybe a little bit of the letdown from that? Yes, it is. I think it, there's a lot of, there's me, but there's also just a lot of companies or just people who had really big things planned for this year and that they're ca and they're canceled uh just overall and i don't know finding a way to compensate for that by having fun events or maybe pushing it off like having a, a sneak peek now and then doing the actual thing next year when this dies down and becomes less of a, a risk is is definitely probably what we're gonna do definitely probably probably <laughs> <laughs> So how, um, for your own business, like how, what, were there any setbacks that you suffered because of, of COVID, COVID and what were they? So at the time, which was early, early this year, me and the bees was preparing for our busiest time of the year. We call it lemonade season because it's hot, especially in like central, especially in Texas and just the states that we're big in, it's pretty hot. And so we're preparing, we had multiple stores that were planning on launching the product at their locations. And like they were already confirmed, we had already produced. And then when COVID hit, they had to cancel that. A lot of the restaurants and cafes that had the product also closed their doors. And so we like other businesses had to completely shift. So we started saying, okay, where are people already going out of necessity, like grocery stores, let's target those. And then also improve our, our online because before, because Me and the Bees is, is in glass and it's a liquid, it's pretty heavy to ship, but we were able to find a way that by shipping more, bev more bottles, we could get the shipping costs down and make it more affordable and accessible. And then also, just finding new stores that were still that were open or that had their own delivery services and actually building those relationships for even past COVID. That's kind of how we've been handling it. So um, with your friends, I assume they're all aware what your professional life is, is kind of like. Um, how, is that challenging at all for you in terms of either making friends or even maintaining friendships because you have such a robust personal life, or professional life, rather. Um, it, it's, it's not a challenge in maintaining friends or, or making friends. I don't think, I don't think having a business makes me, makes me popular. I guess not, a, not as popular as, like, I don't know, star varsity athlete. I'm not sure. But I, I think I hang out with people who are similar to me in ways that they have their own interests and passions. And so we support each other with that. Even if we don't know a lot about what they're doing, we're always supporting each other with that. I would say that there are times when I've had to decline some really f fun events to do a cool thing with me and the bees, but it's always, could we like either reschedule the event or make it up by doing something fun afterwards? Um, so, that's how it goes for that. So, but I mean, you, you've been on TV a lot. So uh, your friends don't think that part is at least cool? Yes. I mean, yes, they're so supportive <laughs> of that. I think, I don't think I do 
a good enough job of of advocating for me to be at least at my school or to my friends. Sometimes like I should be talking about this more. I, how much should I be talking about this? Like how much is it where it's like just saying what's update like updates for the company versus what's bragging and just I guess talking about the company too much. And so usually I err on the side of not even giving updates, which I should be doing. But um, they're they're always like, Let, tell me when my next, even my grandparents, I was like, tell me when your next thing is. I want to tune in and uh, join and support. Uh, it, tell me you've gotten them to at least sell some of your um, uh, lemonade in, in your school. Tell me they've done this. <laughs> so, I mean, we've, do we've donated lemonade. I think. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we've donated lemonade. For example, on MLK Day, my school actually has school, but instead of doing regular classes, we do things to, I guess, force the students to, hey, let's learn about um, MLK Day. So sometimes it's going to the MLK Day March in Austin. Sometimes this year for my grade, it was watching Just Mercy um, in theaters, and they had a, a whole theater that we got to go and watch Just Mercy in. Um, for another time, it was having panels coming, having panels speak. And so what Me and the Bees did for MLK Day was donate lemonade to the march so that my school and also other people who were marching could have the product. So there's things like that where we'll donate to bake sales or things like that, but I haven't sold it. Maybe I should try selling it to the bookstore here. <laughs> you should, right? <laughs> Why not? Um, I know you probably over the, uh, the course of, of your tenure journey with this business, done a lot of cool, amazing things. But I have to imagine that uh, meeting President Barack Obama has got to be somewhere at the top of the list. So uh, explain how it is that you two um, wound up collaborating together and, and what happened. So yes, meeting uh, Barack Obama or Mr. Barack Obama is definitely at with the top of the list, as well as um, Miss Michelle Obama. And that came about actually first with connecting with Miss Michelle through her Let's Move. So she founded the Kids State Dinner, which is where kids c can come up with recipes and submit them to the White House. And so even though I didn't have a recipe, her team reached out to my family and invited me to go and hear the speakers, try some of the recipes that the White House chef made. And that was, and it, that was crazy. Like getting an email from her team inviting me to go out was amazing. And then we had, I think it was a surprise visit from President Obama. And so we fist, we shook hands and I thought that would be like my White House experience, but I got invited back again in the next year for the White House Easter egg roll. And that was right after we had gone on Shark Tank after we finished changing the name. And so we were able to launch the new brand change at White, the White House to 3.500 families. And that was amazing. And I thought that those would have been my White House experiences. And the United States of Women actually changed my speaking engagement at their conference from doing a workshop to introducing the president. They called and said, hey, we'd like to change your engagement. I think you'd be the perfect person to introduce the president. And so that was, that was, that was the most recent, that was right before his term ended. And he actually said like, I'll be on the job market in a couple of months. So I hope she is hiring, which is pretty cool. And we did a face. <laughs> there. So um, with you having had that experience uh, with the Obamas, um, you know, were you, were you nervous at all? Cause I can't imagine introducing the, the former president. Uh, so were you nervous about this or you seem so comfortable like speaking publicly anyway, but was this maybe a time where you actually got a little nervous? Yes, I, I did. And that happens for multiple things, especially this one though. And I always say you're nervous, like you get those butterflies because it means that you care about something. And I really, really cared about meeting them. I really cared about introducing former president Obama. And I think that that nervousness, but also that caring for it really improves what you do there. So I was able to put a lot of work into making a, a speech that actually inspired my book. The, the dream like a kid idea came from my speech for introducing president and how he encourages people to dream big and the biggest dreamers are kids. And that's what I was able to use in business. 
Um, you know, you speaking publicly is not easy for everybody, but you seem to really be very natural when you do it. But, um, you know, I could be wrong about this, but was this something that you had to grow into when it came to public speaking or was this something that you were always kind of able to do? It was something that I was able that I was able to grow into. I, I, I wasn't always able to, I mean, I was outgoing, but actually publicly speaking, especially when it came to new people or people who were older than me, I had to get used to. And the first time of me remembering this was when I was at my first stand, I was dressed up in this bee costume that was my mom's idea. And I had my first customers and I went and hid behind the stand because I was like, I don't know these people. I can't talk about my idea to them. And uh, my mom said, actually, it may have been my dad, like, go on. You've worked so hard on this. You know more about this idea. Just, just talk about your lemonade. And so that was the first time. The second time was when I was around eight and I wanted to do workshops teaching families about the bees. And so I got an offer to do one at a store in Austin. I came up with like a whole tripod and I brought seeds and bee friendly flowers. But um, I remember when looking at the kids who were, who were sitting there, some of the kids were older than me. And I was like, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do this. They're older than me. And my mom said, everyone has something to teach, but everyone also has something to learn. And you know about the bees and you realize that a lot of people don't know about the bees as well. So what if you're able to teach that to them? And so that was another thing that helped me build the confidence that would then take me on to Shark Tank and introducing the president. Like that was something that I, I had to build and grow and I'm still doing today.